Dan, Shani Danielle here, thriving author coach. And essentially, I did a training recently about how to dominate your queue for goals. There was a lot of requests about getting access to the recording. I'm doing this one just for you. So if you're an impact driven author or you're looking to become an author and you want to achieve more goals this year, this is the video you want to watch. Let's dive in. So right out the gate, let's talk about how success loves speed. I hear my mentors tell me this all the time. Success loves speed, but sometimes we have to slow down to speed up. So in our slow down to speed up, we need to develop a couple things for us to achieve our goals this year in Q4. One, we have to develop our confidence. Confidence is the mastery of faith in your capabilities. Is also celebrating your individuality and is boldly presenting your voice to the world knowing its value. So again, confidence is the mastery of faith in your capabilities, right? For a lot of the kingdom authors that I serve and even for me, right? We sometimes have faith in this higher being for me is God is Jesus, right? Like we have faith in God, but we don't always have faith in ourselves. Then Sometimes we don't celebrate our self. <laughs> so celebrating your individuality, not getting caught up into that comparison and then boldly presenting your voice to the world, right? Not being timid. There's nothing wrong with knowing who you are, what you do and how you bring it to the table. Know that it's valuable. That's confidence. Another way to put confidence is it's the radiant sun that shines within you, right? And it shines through you, even in the stormiest of days. So no matter what's going through, that confidence will be that bright, radiant sunlight for you. It's the unwavering belief in your capabilities, illuminating your path and inspiring others to follow. So question one, when you're building this confidence, let's be real with yourself. You might wanna put it in the chat, you might not, it's okay. But do you believe in yourself? Because if you don't believe in yourself, I don't care what I teach, what anybody else teach, what notes you take, it's not going to work. And if you don't believe in you, no one else is going to believe in you. So number one, you want to be intentional about the information you allow in. Be intentional about the information you allow in. Shayna, what do you mean by information? That's a real, real vague statement. Let's make it more clear. Protect your eye gates and your ear gates. Social media, you got your phone, you scrolling and carrying on. Nah, sometimes that's a trap. You find yourself down a crazy rabbit hole. And then sometimes the news, right? When I worked in uh, that law enforcement place for 10 years, see, like the news was spinning all day. Every time you walked in to have lunch, the news was on. I grew up, see, like in the morning time, the news was coming on. Riding home, the news is coming on. Going before you go to bed, the news is on. That's a lot of negativity to take in. So I'm in a season in my life where right now I choose to read the news. Like if I could have an old fashioned newspaper, that probably worked for me. I want to choose how I take in the information and choose when I stop. Podcasts, music. What type of music or podcast are you listening to? Are you listening to Ratchet? <laughs> or are you listening to some music that might bring you down, right? Might make you think about a, a bad time, a sad time. We do not need this in Q4. And then what kind of books are you reading? Because this book that you read in Q4 that you said, I'm going to read this book just to finish it. If it's not helping you, baby, let the book go. So protect your eye gates, protect your ear gates. Next thing, be intentional about the influence you allow in. So you want to protect your mind while it's under construction. Have you ever gone to a construction site, drove by a construction site? They got caution tape, stop signs, police with flashing lights, redirecting traffic. You got to drive slow. They don't want you hitting nobody that's doing work. So while your mind is under construction, as you're building your confidence, you need to sometimes minimize the family, sometimes the friends, and sometimes the strangers that you let into your life. Because the thing about family is family a lot of times knows our history so they can't see our destiny. And they're blinded sometimes by love. They love us so much that who we're 
going to be, it might require us to take some risk. And so they want to protect us. They want to shelter us. So they might say things out of love. Like, are you sure you could do that? What you doing that thing for? Child, you seen them other folks, other folks fail. We don't need to hear none of that in this quarter. I don't want to hear that. Now, friends. We got day one friends and day two friends, right? The friends we grew up with and the friends that we're intentional about staying connected to. So those friends that you had that you grew up, your childhood friends, they were basically not a choice. (laughs) It was based off of your environment, it's based off of who your family allowed you to be around and that was essentially your day ones. And day ones are necessary because they do sometimes keep us grounded. However, they can be a hindrance when it comes down to us building our confidence because they're sometimes like family. So we have day two friends. Those are the people that we are intentional about and will help propel us to our destiny. But before somebody becomes a friend, sometimes we got to hear from strangers. And strangers could be those people that you use that's like-minded. Like if you're an author, you might want to meet other authors and y'all might not be friends where y'all talk about, you know, kids and life and all that other kind of stuff, but you can bond and connect and talk about this book thing and the goals that you want to achieve. So again, you want to, as you're building your confidence, protect your mind while it's under construction. Three, be intentional about the introspection you partake in. The information, the influence, and introspection. So what do I mean by introspection, Shana? Protect your reflection. You want to celebrate your wins. Every win. Every win. Not the big, big wins. The fact that you didn't tell somebody off. The fact that you drank the amount of water you said you wanted to drink today. Celebrate your wins. Embrace positive reviews. We don't need to dwell on negative stuff. We can be our own worst critic at times. And then the enemy come in with condemnation. That's a whole nother topic. So embrace positive reviews. It doesn't necessarily have to be book reviews. It could be like a note that your third grade teacher wrote about you that that was so good. Or it could be a text message that you read that made you feel good. But you just want to read things or look at things that other people said about you that made you feel good because then you'll essentially grow more into doing those things and in that moment when you did that thing well. And then you gotta create rewards for yourself. You don't have to spend a lot of money. It could mean that you get that ice cream. It could mean that you get to watch a couple, you know, extra shows on Netflix or something. So when you create boundaries for yourself, you also have to create rewards for yourself. So after you build your confidence, the next thing is clarity. We have to be clear. Clarity is the compass that directs your journey to success. Speed may fuel the journey, but clarity charts the course. If you got all this gas in the car, full tank of gas, and don't know where you're going, you ain't going nowhere. And if you try to go somewhere, you're going to run out of gas and spend more money trying to get more gas in the car while you're trying to figure out where you need to go. So clarity is the compass that directs your journey to success. So are you clear, friend? Because you could do more in 90 days when you're focused than you can do in nine years when you're fickle. Let's be more efficient. I'm going to say that again. You can do more in 90 days when you're focused than you can do in nine years when you're fickle. So define your direction, right? How do we get clear? What's the direction? Where are we going? What's the goal for the quarter? We can't do everything in 90 days that we set out to do in the beginning of the year, but we can do a little something, something. So start by clearly outlining what you want to achieve this quarter. Do you want to write the book? Do you want to publish the book? Do you want to sell more books? What are you trying to do, friend? Let's figure that out. And once you determine what you want to do, now let's determine your deadlines. So if you're writing your book, right? You have to, or want to sell it or publish it, you have to set clear timelines for your goals that promotes accountability and keeps you on track. So once we know what the quarterly goal is, let's say I want to write 9,000 words. So I got 3,000, 3,000, and 3,000. 3,000 in October, 3,000 in November, 3,000 in December. Now it might look like me writing a few hundred words each week and then a few, you know, a little bit of words each day. 
design, right? Maybe you're publishing the book, so I need to focus on the design. Maybe I'm doing the editing process in October, and maybe in November I'm doing formatting and cover designs, and then maybe in December I'm preparing to like publish and launch and like building up my email list, whatever that looks like. Now maybe I'm trying to get some sales, and I'm like talking about bulk sales, because that's what we do over here on this part of the internet streets. We do bulk sales. So for those bulk sales, how many organizations do you need to reach out to to hit your goals? You don't necessarily, you can't control what an organization does. You can't control how many books an organization buys, but you can control how many you reach out to. So maybe you're gonna reach out to 60 organizations this quarter. For some folks, that sound like a lot. Okay, but it's two, two, and two. So 20 each month. Then that breaks down to five each week. Then it breaks down to maybe one each day of five days a week. So we got our weekly goals and we saw how it breaks down to our daily goals. So as we're trying to figure out what these bite-sized goals look like, we need to have a brainstorm session. So you wanna take at least 45 minutes, get you a sheet of paper, and write down everything that's floating in your head. Some examples could be, maybe I need to find an editor. Maybe I need to contact organizations. Maybe I need to write sales copy. Maybe my brain is telling me I need to check the followers app. Oh, I do gotta go grocery shopping and I wanna start that podcast. So after our brainstorm session, we have to determine our deliverables. Remember, we got 90 days in this quarter. We cannot do everything. So what are we gonna do? What are we gonna delay? What are we gonna delegate? And what are we going to delete? You want to put it on a quadrant like this, or you might have four sheets of paper. Sometimes I just like putting it on a paper with a quadrant and I'll put my stuff in here. So I might drag over, find an editor. It'll look like this. Find an editor. Then I might want to contact organizations if that's my due. And so then I want to give myself a date for these. Maybe I'm going to do this October 1st. Maybe I'm going to do this November 1st, right? Whatever I want to do. Then Delay, starting the podcast. Am I really starting the podcast this quarter or is this a distraction to get me away from my real deliverables? So start the podcast, I'm gonna delay this. Maybe I'm gonna revisit this in February, 2024. Delegate, what can I delegate? What can I push aside, right? What can I maybe not have to do myself? And so when I talk to a lot of authors, particularly women authors, we feel like we got to do everything. I don't have time. I go grocery shopping. There's too much to do. But what about when you lay in the bed, maybe 20 minutes before you go to bed, right? (laughs) Or you on your lunch break and you're eating. You can pull out an app on your phone for whatever your local grocery store is. And you can order yourself some groceries. You can just open up the app, check, check, check. I want some milk, I want some water, I want some chicken, whatever that (laughs) looks like. Order it. And then you can either set it for delivery or a set up pickup. That's one of the beautiful things that came out of 2020. Most people got their tech stuff together. And now we can either do delivery or pickup. We could pull up to the grocery store and they could put the stuff in our trunk. Now I know somebody gonna say, I don't want people picking my produce. Okay, friend. Then still, all the other stuff in them aisles, there's no need for you to walk down the aisles and pick cereal. That's silly. Like, you want to waste more time. You want to stand in line a lot more longer, especially depending on the time of the month that it is. And you want to spend more money because you're going to walk past something. Oh, and I just put the stuff on the app, put it in there, pay for it, go to the grocery store, Pick it up since you got to get your own produce, right? It's not being delivered to your house. Go inside the grocery store. Get your produce. Get your apples. Get your pineapples. Get your oranges. Get your lettuce. Get your kale. Whatever it is you're getting. Your spinach. Pick that out. Go to line. Normally, you can do the express line for something like that and get out of there. There's no need for you to go to all those aisles. That's a waste of time and your time is valuable in this season. And then, friend, you just got to delete some stuff. You do not need to be checking the followers app on Instagram to determine who is unfollowing you. That is not moving the needle in your business at all. (laughs) So you do not need to check that unless you're a social media manager and an author. You got a book about how to social media manage. And so this is part of your social media strategy. But if you ain't a social media manager and you're not trying to KPI what's going on with you know, how people followers are, writing a book, publishing a book, and selling a book don't got nothing to do with this followers app. So let that go. Then we need to set a plan to thrive for every night. So you want to write down three things that went well. 
What went well that day? Celebrate your win every single night. We are so hard on ourselves. Then we want to plan our day before our great days actually start at nighttime. Because if you're trying to plan your day in the morning, you're already behind. So what are the three things that you need to complete the next day? And then end it with what's three affirmations you can say about yourself. I'm finding myself always writing affirmations. I got a whole book that I keep them in. But maybe you just got a sticky note. <laughs> so maybe I am amazing. I work in excellence. People love to buy my book. People love to leave reviews on my book because I see a lot of authors complain about reviews and I can't, I can't, I can't. Well, let's not focus on the can't. Let's just be intentional about focusing on the can't. All right? Cool. Next, dedicate to development. So you just set some deadlines and you determine your direction, but now we got to dedicate to development. So what do I mean, friend? Keep growing. Might look like getting some coaching, might look like having some accountability partners, and it might look like doing weekly check-ins with yourself. So, we done got our clarity, we have built some confidence, and now we're ending it off with some commitment. I don't wanna take too much of your time, friend. So commitment is the anchor that keeps your goals in sight and the engine that propels you toward them regardless of the rough waves or wind direction. So commitment is that anchor, it's that engine, like in your car. If you got gas in the car, if you got the map and you know exactly where you're going, baby, if you don't got that engine, that car ain't going nowhere. So are you committed? Commitment means you are committed to sticking to whatever decision you made, right? Long after the initial excitement has faded. That doesn't mean staying committed to bad decisions, but it does mean that if this, whatever you're deciding to do is part of the bigger plan and purpose for your life, after you're no longer excited anymore, you can't just keep hopping to the next thing, to the next thing, to the next thing. You have to stay true to what you said you would do despite the odds so that way you can begin to trust you again. One of my mentors said it like this, right? We need whys. And if your why doesn't make you cry, the cost of commitment will be too high. Woo! Let's say that one more time. <laughs> if your why doesn't make you cry, the cost of commitment will be too high. So the next thing you want to do is cultivate consistency. So as you become committed, cultivate consistency. Success is not achieved overnight, right? Progression over perfection. Give yourself some grace, friend. Regardless of the where you think you should be, I bet you you're doing better than you think you are. And by focusing on the things that we said earlier, your wins and what's going well, you'll see, wow, when you write down those 25 things or 50 things that you did well this year, like, oh, okay, cool. I'm, I'm doing better than I think I am. Then you want to commit to whatever routine that you have. So if you're trying to get the book written, then are you writing regularly? Are you engaging with your audience consistency? And regularly and consistently doesn't mean daily, right? It could look like three times a week, five times a week, right? What does that look like? And then managing your business operations daily. Also, on this commitment thing, we got to curb complacency because sometimes we look at what other folks are doing and we see like, man, they ain't doing that much. Like, I got a whole lot going on. <laughs> and so we sometimes break ourselves higher than where we really are based off of what we're called to put onto this earth. So never settle for good enough. Keep pushing your boundaries and stay committed to continuous improvement. You want to embrace a growth mindset. That's where you set higher goals. You want to keep it real with yourself, right? So you're embracing a growth mindset. You're setting higher goals for yourself based off of the vision that you have. And you're keeping it real with yourself, friend. Number three, cherish your clock. Cherish your clock. You commit it, your time is valuable. Time is a finite resource. It is way more valuable than money. And I find a lot of times that we don't achieve our goals in whatever timeline we set them because we're so worried about trying to nickel and dime every little thing that we might not invest in the tool or resource. We might not invest in the coach or the person to help us. We might not invest in the team to help get things done faster. So 
Whatever that looks like, friend. We might not want to pay the $5 for Instacart to deliver the groceries to our house. Like, time is a finite resource. It is infinitely more valuable than money. So what are you going to do, friend, right? We, we don't got all day. We like trying to get in and out of here. What are you going to do? Are you going to achieve your goals this quarter? And if you are, are you like going to tell yourself you are and then do nothing, right? You spent this time, you watched it, you still here. We like almost 20 minutes in. Are you going to do nothing? Are you going to do it alone? Like you got this, right? I used to be like that. Group projects. Oh my gosh. I can see group projects. It's like, why well, I got to work with these people. They're terrible. I'm <laughs> doing all the daggone work. They saying they're going to do stuff. They're not doing stuff. I'm about to want to deal with that, right? I hate a group projects, but in business, it's like, Shayna, you have to learn to trust people. You have to give people the chance. And you have to sometimes be that leader to redirect things. So I find myself reteaching, retraining, and then sometimes I got to release and love. So that's what we got to decide what we're going to do this quarter, right? Are we going to do things alone or are we going to partner with people? Sometimes it's better to do it with support, right? Getting that coach, getting that mentor, getting that accountability person to help us achieve our goals. Whatever we're called to do, especially if it's big, right? Some of our goals are just too small, especially if it's big. We need support. We can't do it by ourselves. Rome was not built in a day with just one person. Bridges, when you look at how they go from like one side of the river to the other side of the river, one person did not just build that, right? So we got to do it with support. So what I want to offer you is a thriving author planning session. Whether you're that author who's trying to write the book, whether you're trying to publish the book, whether you're trying to sell the book specifically in bulk, that's what I specialize in, we can map out a plan on what that looks like for you and it doesn't cost you anything. So why would I do a plan like this for free? Well, essentially when I map out game plans like this, potential clients say, that's amazing. Can you help me implement it? If that's you, great. Good at what we do. If we believe it's the best fit, if you believe it's the best fit, let's go. If not, no hard feelings. You have a great plan. You can run on your own. And whether you choose to move forward or rock out on your own, it's still a total win-win, friend. At least you got a solid plan, right? So what do you do next? You want to visit thrivingwithbooks.com. That'll give you access to my calendar. Let me know that you watched this training and I'll help you map out that plan. It'll be with me, right? For a limited time. It won't be with my team or anything. It'll be with me. So like, let's like really be intentional about mapping this plan out to achieve our goals this quarter. Again, you could do more in 90 days when you're focused than you can do in nine years when you're fickle. All right, friend, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. As always, rise, write, thrive.